So guys, here are some coding assignment based on what you have studied in this module. So this module, the major part of this module was IP address mathematics. So here are few programming questions for you on IP address mathematics. So prerequisite of doing this assignment is that you should be familiar with the bitwise and or operations in C and you must be familiar with the left and right shift operations in C. And of course you must have a thorough understanding of this module in order to do this assignment. After doing all your assignments you should upload all your assignments and codes on your github account. So in the very first lecture of this course I have introduced you to the github account. If for some reason you have skipped that lecture please revisit it. It is very important to maintain github account nowadays to prove your competence in the job market. And the relevance of this assignment is that it will prepare you to use bitwise manipulation to achieve network related operations. Not knowing bitwise operations in C is a great put off for interviewers. Please note that if you are appearing for system programming jobs in the market, you should be thorough with the bitwise operations. So let's go ahead. So you have to create a file called ip underscore maths dot c and you have to write the c functions to accomplish the following functionality. So in question one you have to write a function get broadcast address. The input to the function is the ip address as a string and the mask value and the output pointers. This is the pointer and this is the output buffer in which you will get the result back out of this function. So you can see the usage of this function, right? So declare the array, then initialize the array. So this is actually your output array where the result will be stored. And you have an IP address 192.168.2.10 and the mask value 20. So you just call this API get broadcast address and the first argument is the pointer to the string which denotes the IP address 192.168.2.10. The second argument is the mask value and the third argument is a pointer to the buffer. That is the empty buffer in which the result will be obtained. Right? And when this function returns you should print the broadcast address that is returned in the output buffer. So here is the test case. Let's say your input is 192.168.2.10 and the mask value is 24. So the broadcast address of this IP address and the mask combination is 192.168.2.255. So this is the expected output. Similarly, you can test your function with the test case 2. Supply the input IP address and the mask value and the expected broadcast address should be 10.1.31.255 right and you can use link 2 for result verification I have provided here two very good links link 1 and link 2 if you visit this link so this is the link 1 you can type here the IP address in a.b.c.d format or you can also type the IP address in the integer form so let's say, let us take this example, you type out the IP address 192.168.2.10 and just convert, so it will give you the result. So this website will print the integer equivalent of this IP address, the hexadecimal representation of the same IP address, right, and the octal representation of the same IP address. In the second link, second link is even more helpful. Let us say, let us suppose you type out 192.168.0.2 and the mask value is 24. Just calculate and this website will give you the network ID which is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. So this is the network ID for this IP address and mask value and the broadcast address will be 192.168.0.255 
and in this subnet the maximum number of machines that could be present is 254. So you can use these two links to verify the output of your function for this assignment. Right? So going forward in the second question you have to write a function get IP integral equivalent. So this function simply returns the equivalent integer for the IP address. So for example if your input is 192.168.0.10 then, then this function should return the equivalent integer for this IP address. So you can see in the test case for this IP address you should get integer equivalent value. Right? And in the second test case for this IP address you should get integer equivalent value for this IP address. You can verify these test cases using link 1. Right? Then in the third function, then in the third question you have to write a function get ABCD IP format. That is you have to return the IP address in ABCD format. So the input to the function is the IP address which is in the unsigned int form and the and the function must return an array which is filled with the IP address in ABCD format. So you can see the usage of this function take the integer value so this integer value actually represents this IP address and take the buffer memory just call this function pass the integer IP address as the first argument which is input and pass the empty buffer which should be filled with the correct IP address in a.b.c.d format and simply print the IP address that is returned or calculated by the function. Right? So basically it should print 122.172.178.53 Right? Then in the next question you have to write a function in C to get the network ID and the input to the function is the IP address and the mask value and the output should be and the function should return an output in the output buffer. Right? So you can see the usage of this function take the empty buffer then take the input IP address take the mask value call the function and the network ID should be returned in the output buffer. Just print that buffer. So this function should compute the network ID from the IP address and mask value combination. Of course you can use link 2 to verify our result. Then you have to write question number 5. You have to write a function get subnet cardinality. So to compute the cardinality of a subnet you only need a mask value. So cardinality of the subnet means maximum number of assignable IP addresses. Right? So the usage is very simple. Just take the mask value 24 and just call the API and this API should return the cardinality of the subnet based on mask value. For example in our course we have studied how to compute the cardinality for subnet mask value 24 and the cardinality is 254. So you can use link 2 for verification of your result. Then the last question is the question number 6. In this question you have to write a function which returns an int value. Int value means if it returns 0 it means true. If it returns minus 1 then it is false. So this function actually checks membership of an IP address in a subnet. The first argument to this function is the network ID and the second argument to this function is the mask value. So first and second argument of the function is the input. So first and second argument to the function forms the subnet ID. Right? And the last argument to this function is the IP address and this function should check the membership of this IP address into this subnet. So it should return 0 if the IP address is a member of this subnet and it should return minus 1 if this IP address is not a member of this subnet. 
So you can check the usage of this API. The network ID let's say is 192.168.0.0. The mask value is 24. So these two values put together forms a subnet. So you can compute a subnet from these two values. And the test IP address is 192.168.0.13. Now call this API, right? And pass the argument. So this API should check the membership of this IP address into the subnet, right? So result is zero. It means that the IP address is a member of this subnet. And if it doesn't return minus one, it means that the IP address is not a member of this subnet, right? So these are the six questions and you should write a C function for all of these functions. And, and you should test the correctness of your functions using link 1 and link 2 that I have provided. You should run your functions with good enough number of test cases. So this is your coding assignment. And of course to do this assignment use GCC compiler and do this assignment preferably on Linux only that is inside your virtual machine. Uh, I would suggest develop a habit to do all your assignments and development work in Linux environment only, right? And you can simply Google how to compile the C program and run the executable if you are not aware with the steps. These are very simple steps you can easily find on Google, right? So good luck with your assignment guys, hope you will enjoy them.